Hello and welcome to another edition of the Event Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this is the last installment of our color correction series. Thank God you will think, I guess. In this episode, I'll show you how to use simple vignettes to highlight a part of the image and then we'll wrap up with some of the color correction options I haven't previously mentioned. But first, let's do a nice vignette. Uh, we'll use it on this image. We know it very, very well. It's the puzzled looking woman. And we'll use Evit's paint effect for it. It's actually a pretty straightforward and simple process. I'll put the paint effect on video track two, and uh, therefore I will uh, add edits at the segment borders. So the paint effect will only be applied to the segment with the puzzled woman and not the kiss, because we would want to use a different vignette there if we wanted to use one. Okay, so now let's go to Tools, Effect Palette, Image, and drag and drop the paint effect on the empty track. There it is, nice little paint effect. Go to Effect Editor, and the first thing we'll do is zoom out of the image by using that will reduce magnifying, or in this case, the magnifying glass. And why do we do that? We want to drag um, a rectangle over the whole image. So choose the rectangle tool, make sure the mode is solid, and just draw a rectangle over the whole image. Now this looks awesome red, we'll change the color to black or whatever you want your vignette to look like, but black is actually a pretty good color. So this doesn't look all that great. So the next thing we'll have to do is draw the vignette shape. We'll use the oval tool for that, but you can use all the tools you want. You can do a rectangular vignette, you can do a polygon or even a freehand uh, uh, drawn vignette. But for in this uh, case, we'll use the oval tool. And set the mode to erase and draw it about where we know the actress was. There we go. Put it on around her face. Um, still not that awesome, right? So we'll use feathering to fix that. Crank up the feathering by, say, a lot. <laughs> and I could either change the oval to accommodate your vignette, make it look the way you want it to, And you can also change the bias. Turn to the left and the vignette will move to the edges of the frame. Increase the bias and the vignette will move to the edge of your oval. Uh, check out uh, if there's banding. I've, I've experienced serious banding on this effect at least in older versions of MIDI Composer, but uh, I don't see a lot of banding here, so, you know, I guess we're good. Now this is, uh, of course, uh, a little strong, so you could go with something like this. This is actually a pretty strong vignette, and we're laying the focus strongly on her face, right? Check out the, way, the image before, and after. So let's get back into color correction mode. We'll get rid of our vignette and we'll check out some of the options I haven't discussed before. Check out these. These are the automatic options. Auto contrast. As you can see, it uh, simply um, uses the Y waveform and puts the highlight to 100% 
and the shadows to 0%. There's also auto balance. This will balance the shot. Now I'd say this is a little green. And it is, and there's, you know, a little less uh, red in here. Use it if you don't have uh, anything else you can do. <laughs> Otherwise, don't use it. And then there's the remove color cast, where you can click it, and then you have an eyedropper and uh, point to a part of the image that should be neutral in color. This is actually a pretty decent result for a one-click solution. We have pretty much the same options here in the HSL tab as well, auto balance. Does the same thing only with the color wheels and you know it looks it, it looks a little different this is actually more neutral than the curves auto balance was and auto black which sets the you know setup and auto white sets the gain and there's auto contrast which does both these things weird thing different results <laughs> to do auto contrast it's different from auto black and auto white isn't that weird i think that's kind of weird but you know anyway if you always wondered what these little boxes are for these are buckets and you can store color corrections in them what you do is you're uh, on a shot that you've color corrected and you want to use the same color correction for a different shot so first option or I'll click one of the buckets and it will save the color correction that you're on at that moment. Go to the shot that you want to apply the same correction to and simply click on the correction and it will just do that and apply the exact same correction to the second shot. You can do that with up to eight shots what you can of course also do if these eight aren't enough or you want to label them because now they're C1 through C8 and you have actually no visual or textual or whatever uh, knowledge of what you know they are. You have to remember what C1 stands for or just try it out all the time. You can of course also save a color correction to a bin by dragging and dropping this little icon into a bin. And now you could um, give this uh, a nice name, like bar, warm, tones, or whatever. And you'd know exactly, oh, this is the bar, warm, tones thing. And you can apply it from a bin. And lastly, but not least, if you go to the effects editor of the color correction, you can now uh, keyframe all the corrections. That wasn't possible in older versions of Media Composer, but now you can keyframe pretty much all the different uh, parameters of the color correction. Before you had to, you know, use edits and transitions uh, to change uh, the color correction within a shot. Now you don't have to, you can actually keyframe this uh, with uh, the advanced keyframes parameters, which is a nice option. All right, uh, thank you for watching this episode of the Evit Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at evitscreencast.com or on iTunes. Also, you can go to the website and check out past episodes. If you have any comments or suggestions like future show topics or anything, just drop me a line at mail at evitscreencast.com and just comment on the website. Also, do go ahead and follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. If you'd like to know what kinds of things I do professionally, check out editguy.de, where I promote myself. Once again, thanks for watching this last episode of our color correction tutorials, and uh, see you next time with a different topic, finally. <laughs> Till then, goodbye.